Hello guys and welcome back. And welcome back to what I'm hoping is going to be a fairly major change to the power steering system in my EV build. Now, for those of you who have been watching along up until now, it will be no surprise to you to know that the power steering solution that I came up with was a little unorthodox and I'll show you what I mean. Right, now it's a little hard to see, but down in there is an alternator from, I think, um, a Volkswagen. What I did was I took all of the electronic components out of that alternator and connected a low voltage to the brushes on the rotator. And that turned this alternator into a motor, a three-phase electric motor. I then drove that from an e-bike controller and used that to, to drive the power steering pump which is this, this top part here. Now it does work but there's a couple of issues with it. The main one being that some time ago, uh, not long after I got this all set up all working, I had a slight problem with the low voltage controller that was sending, it should have been sending 5 or 6 volts to the brushes on the, rot on the rotor and for some reason I don't really understand why the, uh, the thing it was supposed to be sending 6 or 7 volts to it decided to send full pack voltage which at the time was 42 volts we're talking about a, an e-bike pack here by the way e-bike battery pack sent 42 volts to the, ro to the rotor to the brushes and I wasn't aware of it until I smelt something, a burning smell coming from the car. At the time I was charging the high voltage battery and the level and the the e-bike battery pack at the same time. And like I say, I could smell this burning smell, and of course, full panic mode set in. I disconnected the high voltage charger and started running around looking for the cause of the smoke. And the, the smell and by this time there was actually smoke started to come up from this corner of the car so I, I very quickly figured out that it was coming from the motor and then the whole thing dawned on me what the problem was so anyway long story short I cooked the alternator motor and ever since then it's never really been quite as good it's never been as powerful as uh, I suspect something is shorting out somewhere coils are shorting out or some such and it's just not really it's not optimal anymore, let's, let's just put it that way. So, with that in mind, that's where this comes in. Now, the normal standard solution that a lot of EV builders have gone for is an electric hydraulic power steering pump from a Vauxhall uh, Zephyra. I think some of the courses had them as well, not sure, but I didn't go that road. Once again, I'm being different. And this is a power steering pump, electric, electrically operated hydraulic power steering pump from a Volvo. Now I managed to get this for, I, it was so cheap it was unreal, about £25 delivered off eBay. So I thought, what the heck, I'll go for it. And uh, so this is what I've got. And the plan is to initially hook this up see how it performs and if it works then I'll remove the power steering pump that's currently in the car. Unfortunately I didn't get connectors for the, the, the plugs, the plug connectors with this so what I did was I dug out the loom that was in the Nissan Leaf, basically looked for high voltage high current connectors and there was a few on it and this is what I've come up with. This is, uh, I, I basically just took the plug apart and I'm going to use that. That fits very nicely on there. Hopefully you can see that. That fits very nicely on there. And I haven't pushed it down yet, but all I need to do is push that in. But before I do that, I'm going to put some heat shrink on it. Now, I've already put heat shrink on the other lead, which is this one. You can see there I've already heat shrink this. So I'm going to do the same again with the red one. Get those in, bolt this into the car and give it a try.
feel and as you can see they're now well insulated so if I push that on there it goes down nicely do the same with this one there you go the two of them are in there nice and neat nice and snug very close to each other but that doesn't matter because they're uh, they have the heat shrink on them so that just needs filled with hot glue now in fact it might actually I might just squish that down a wee bit just to make it a bit tighter. Obviously these are not designed to go on those connectors so it's possible the connectors they're designed to go on are a little bit a little bit thicker. I'll just squish it in a bit. You'll simply see that it's bent in a little bit. So I'm going to push this on here. Hopefully that will be a little bit tighter. It is a lot tighter in fact. <coughs> yep, much better. Okay, I'll do the same with this one. Yeah, it's much better. A much tighter connection. I don't know how stronger it is, but well, at least it would have been if I had got it on right. There we go. Right. Good. Right. So I can go ahead and fill that with hot glue and then these will all come out. And these ones, I think they're probably all right. There's a good gap in between them. And you can see there's a good gap in between these, so I just push them on down in. And they're a nice tight fit. That's good. I don't have the proper connector, but, you know, you make do with what you've got. And so long as it's a good solid connection with proper OEM automotive quality connectors, I can't see that being a problem. Okay guys, this is the um, website where I got the information on the power steering pump that I've got. And, uh, hopefully this is correct. I can't be 100% sure, but it all looks to be correct. Or I mean, the, 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 the thing is similar, similar connectors and so on. Showing as 12 volt positive fused ground. I believe all I need for this to make it work is... 12 volts on the main uh, heavy current wires and then supply 12 volts on the ignition wire. I believe that's all I need. And the can then wires will be optional. I'll add them at a later date. The hot glue gun is just warming up nicely. <laughs> Okay guys, this is probably about to get very messy. I've got the pump here and the plan is to use this, which is a, an old turkey baster, which has seen better days. These things, by the way, are not particularly good quality. I bought them from, I think, AliExpress, but very, very handy for taking off these spring clips. Much, much handier than trying to use pliers or whatever. Much better for that than that. It's probably going to get messy. Right, so this is what was just in that pipe there now. And what just came out of that pipe? 22, yep, 22 it is. So guys, what I'm actually hoping is going to happen here is that this fitting 
will go straight into this fitting. That's what I'm hoping will happen. I'm about to find out if that's the case or not. In an ideal world, I would put a new washer on that. But right now, I just want to make sure this fits. And what do you know? Hydraulic fittings have some sort of standards after all. That's good. Right, so just nip that up. I'm not over tighten it. That's way too big to go on directly. And the other ones are kind of big too. Oh dear. That ain't gonna work. I need some kind of a step down uh, for that for that pipe to fit onto there. So let's see what I can come up with. Right, well this is some pipe that I've managed that I have. It's actually a pipe I think I bought for the vacuum hose, but I'm sure it'll do this too. Hopefully. And I've got a reducer, which is big here and smaller here. Now, the nice thing about this hose is it is only the... Yeah, that's not bad. This is only a return. So, and in fact, it'll be down in here eventually. But for now, I just want to see if this works. I'm not too concerned. Like I say, this is only a return, so there's no real pressure in it. There we go. Now, just to be sure to be sure. Okay, that's tight. It's not tight there, but it's only the return, so it'll not pop off. So, hmm, here's a question. Do I want to test this? And then have to empty the whole thing out and do it all again? Or do I want to actually just fit it? I think we shall remove this little reservoir here and we'll come up with some way of mounting this thing after we've removed this. So, we'll backtrack on that. And then just straight into here. Okay, I will get a a clamp for that, but that, that should hopefully be good enough for testing purposes. <coughs> right. Just nip it up. I'll see if I can find a, a suitable clamp for that one. So in theory all I need to do now is to fill that with power steering fluid. Right, this is the stuff I used the last time, so I'm just hoping that, it's that this pump is happy enough with it. Can top it up later. So now I just need to hook up these wires and see what happens. It's a bit of a shame that I can't or that I'm not just going to continue with the the alternator motor idea but if it had been working perfectly I would have been happy enough to do all of the extra work that was involved in automating the the turn on of the e-bike controller and all of that but it wasn't working properly it was underpowered and it seemed to be getting worse so I decided that uh, discretion was a better part of valor and we'll try this and let's see if we can just jam that in some way 
Right, so there's a nut here. I'll just loosen it and stick this underneath, just for testing purposes. Let's see what happens when we touch the live. I'm not really expecting anything to happen here, so I'm just going to try this and see what happens. Push it in there, not great, but it'll do. And then, in theory, hopefully that was just a little capacitor was uh, flashing there. In theory, when I touch this wire to the live, that should start to spin. And it's not even that noisy. One of the problems I had with the Opal Zephyro one was how noisy it was. You can see what sort of power steering we've got. Very nice. Perfect. It works. So all I need to do now is figure out how to mount this. Exactly what I was hoping for. Brilliant. Be interesting to see what sort of current we're getting on that. Okay, hopefully you can see that. That's the ammeter going to the the main high current uh, connection. That is ten amps dropping down to less than nine amps. In fact, eight. Wow, that's that's excellent. That's brilliant. The last time I tried doing this with a Zephira power steering pump, the current just went through the roof. It was reading more than 40 amps. So you can see what's happening there. I can't see it. Um, but I'm easily able to turn the steering wheel with one hand. That's great. Probably have to top up our coolant pump again. But, uh, or sorry, our the reservoir on the on the pump but it's going right down to seven perfect why didn't it do that in the first place <laughs> oh well you live and learn the alternator driving the original freelander power steering pump seemed like a good idea at the time <coughs> it seemed like a fun thing to do at the time it never really seemed like a good idea it always seemed like a fun thing to do um, but turns out it wasn't worth the hassle. But you never know these things unless you try them. So I don't regret doing it. And now all I need to do is try and get this thing mounted, get it mounted in a slightly more sensible spot. We have started the process of removing the old power steering pump solution. <laughs> and. The removal of the power steering pump has gone smoothly. That's out, just taking out a couple of bolts. However, getting out the, the motor is not going to be quite so simple. And the problem is, when I built this contraption, I bolted the alternator into the metal cradle, which holds batteries and all sorts of things, before installing the cradle in the car and it kind of has to come out in the same order that it went in which means which which would mean dismantling all of the batteries here taking them all out the ones from below taking the bumper off the car the radiator off drain the coolant a lot more work than i really want to get into uh, so <laughs> i've been trying the gentle persuasion method and not really going according to plan. You can sort of see the damage I've created down there, but I haven't actually achieved the goal, which was to remove that bolt or to cut it in half. So what I think I'm going to have to do is cut off this bracket here as low as I can possibly get it. 
using a grinder or whatever I can get in there with. And then hopefully with a finger file, maybe be able to reach right down in there and, and do that. Noise alert. Bend steel off and enough, and it breaks. Let's see what we can do with this. Mm. <laughs> that is the result of my hammering and banging and whatever so now that that end is out I'm hoping to be able to encourage the other end out it's got to be said this wasn't the most sensible way to install the thing okay so we've been able to half drill and half bludgeon our way through there just at uh, that point and similarly half drill and half bludgeon our way through there so now this whole thing rocks what I'm trying to do now is, is unwind this bolt here quarter turn at a time so it's difficult for me to see what I'm doing and show you what I'm doing too just keep unwinding that and the theory is that it's only going through the support bracket at the other end by a little bit. So if I unwind this enough, it might actually leave it with just one place where it's secured down in there. And then I can either snap it off or cut it out. But this appears to be working for you at the moment anyway. Let's see how far we can get this. Now, this is going to be a bit time consuming, so I'll come back when this is out. Alright guys, so by unscrewing that threaded bar, you can see down there, I've managed to unscrew it enough that it is now free at this side, because I bashed it and broke it and cut it, and it's free there because it's bashed, broke and cut, and it's free over there because it's been unscrewed from there. But it's still being held quite strongly in this corner and it's kind of hard to get at it. So, yeah, don't do this at home, guys. This is not advisable. And you will be witnesses as to how well or otherwise this now goes. Okay, keep dragging and see what happens. Something just gave away there, but I'm not sure what it was. Good. That's the rope snapping. 
Yeah, it's possibly not a good thing for the rope to snap. It's taken quite a bit of weight off the front of the car as well, which is not what I wanted. Mm. Sorry guys, I didn't actually record that, but um, a few gentle taps with this and this in the appropriate spot and that bolt completely sheared off. I don't know if you can see it there or not. Just, well, that's where it was. And it's now lying beside it, so with any luck, that will now be relatively easy to get out with just a little bit more tappy tappy. We think we are almost there. We're almost there. to take the whole front of the car and strip all the electrics and several other jobs that I did not want to have to do. Am I? Am I? You can do it. It's not going to come out without a fight. I need to admit something. I never actually measured this. So I don't know for sure if it's going to be high enough. If the gap is going to be big enough for it. But I think it should be alright. below the level of the uh, bonnet catch whatever and yeah it's fine it'll fit we're in <laughs> ah, big job okay guys so I've had this power steering pump installed in the car now for a couple of weeks and I know it's not orthodox but it is actually really well jammed in using this foam this is, this is foam from an old computer file server box. So it is it's high quality foam and it's, it, it doesn't want to move. It's, it's in there pretty solid. Anyway, the final thoughts on the power steering pump. It's great. It works an absolute treat. It gives me all the power assistance I need. It's relatively quiet. Certainly, I think it's quieter than the Zafira pump that I had a while ago. Basically, whenever I have the bonnet closed, and I'm in the car with the windows closed, I can't hear it. It's it's really, really quiet. So I'm very, very happy with that. The way I have it connected, I have the, the main power connections coming across here and into, I think the negative goes directly to the battery. The positive goes into here and is fused on one of these fuses. I think it's the 80 amp fuse. So it's all installed pretty much as it's going to be. At some stage I will make a proper bracket for this but for now this is perfectly adequate. It's, uh, like I say it's absolutely solid in there and no intentions of moving. So that's all great but there was one thing that I had forgotten about when I installed it and that is charging. Whenever I connect the charger to the back here I have to put the ignition on in order to make it charge. The problem with that is the power steering pump was kicking in and was running the entire time so that obviously didn't make any sense. So I actually have the power steering pump now on this switch so whenever I 
I'll just turn it on. So whenever I put the ignition on and the power steering pump starts to spool up, which it will do in a second, there it goes. If I'm driving the car, that's fine. I now have nice light power steering. But if I want to charge the car, all I need to do is lift that switch, lift that little cover, flick up the switch, and there you go. The power steering pump is now off. That means that I can now charge it and drive it without any issues. And when I get in to, to, drive, the, to drive the car, I just have to turn the ignition on and there's no more faffing about with trying to turn on the, the battery in the back of the car and all of the nonsense that was going on previously. I thought it was a nice idea. Many others thought it was a stupid idea and it turned out they were right and I was wrong. So <laughs> it should come as no surprise to anybody that I got something wrong. Anyway guys, look, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. The, uh, the power steam pump from the Volvo I think it's the way to go. Some other people are using the Zephyra Opel stroke Vauxhall Zephyra pump. It works too. Uh, whatever works for you is, is fine. Uh, I suspect both pumps are being made by the same company anyway because they do look very, very similar. And the way they connect is very similar as well. I think this one's slightly taller than the Opel Zephyra pump. Not sure. It works and that's the main thing. With that, thank you very much guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.